Daniel, first chapter, the fifth verse through the eighth verse, and then 19. Amen. 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 The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among these were from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Zechariah, Azara. The chief official gave them new names to Daniel, the name of Belchazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, and to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azara, Abednego. Yes. But Daniel resolved to himself not to be defiled with the raw food and wine, and he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. Tag this. Keep it a hundred. Heavenly Father, we come room, Lord God, this morning, Lord God. I stand before your throne and on your throne, Lord God, and ask that God that you sit John down, Lord God, and that you come in place. That you speak to me, through me, and for me, Lord God. Give us a word, Lord God, with strength, power, and conviction, Lord God, that it would break yokes, Lord God, and save souls. And Lord God, we're mindful to give you the glory, the praise, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. It has been said that youth is wasted on the young. It's said that so much in our world needing to be accomplished that youth's energy is often wasted on trivial pursuits rather than noble quests. Uh, I, I've met and spoke with a number of young folks and I'm pleasantly impressed with those that I've talked to. And I'm not willing to concede total blame on the youth. I'm one that believes in cause and effect. I'm one that believes in product of environment. And I'm convinced that of this as a witness of the presence of Todd here today. Amen. Amen. Daniel was just a boy. Uh, when he was led into captivity, uh, he was not led there voluntarily, but captured and taken to Babylon. Uh, the intent of their captors was to make him and the others with him Babylonian. I don't know an apple tree that gives four peaches. Uh, uh, for three years, the king's court tried to convert this young Hebrew boy to the ways of Babylonians. But instead, the record of his youthful years burned as a star of hope for those who were also in exile. Uh, because Daniel, you see, was a trailblazer for the Lord. Uh, for at least three years or more, the Babylonians tried to influence Daniel. Uh, Daniel's conversion to a heathen culture. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And in reviewing the scripture earlier, I couldn't help but to compare his experience to that of self-exile exile journeys that our Christian youth take today when they leave their homes for four years of college, away from paternal supervision and the nurture of their church home. They too have opportunity to reject worldly influence and to refuse the king's meat. But there will be a knocking at their dawn door a great temptation to waste their youth on glutinous and reckless rebellion. Daniel is not the only example of youth influence in the scriptures. Uh, we might want to know that in the, there are many young biblical mentors there. Uh, astute Bible students know that uh, uh, of the 12 disciples who changed the course of history uh, after the resurrection of Christ. 
Uh, only Peter had reached the age of 20. Uh, the apostles Paul's protege, Timothy, he was only 17 when he was uh, appointed a pastor of the church of Ephesus. Am I right about it? Uh, so there's no question that God uses obedient youth to complete, to accomplish his will. Amen. So here's the question. Here's the question on our minds this day. How can a youth stay on the straight and narrow path that God allows a youth for his kingdom's work? We can look at Daniel for some tips and some hints of the tumultuous times of uh, how to stay on a, a, a good road, a safe road, and keep it real. Or as the youth say, keep it 100. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, if you're going to keep it 100, yeah. you've got to be courageous like that. Right. Yes, right. Courageous. Where does our courage come from? We each find it in different places. Yeah. My courage comes from the biblical knowledge of knowing that my Christ died for me. I gathered his courage because it had to be when they laid him down. And they put a spike in the right hand and a spike in the left hand. He yes. never said a word. Yes. They put a spike through both his feet. He never said a word. Yes. They pierced his side. He never said a word. Jesus. Courage. Draw it. You can draw it from your mother or you can draw it from your father. Yeah. There's somewhere that you can draw your courage from that will motivate you. To do the right thing for God. Yes. And if you do the right thing for God, I'm telling you he's going to do the right thing for you. Yes. Yes. Uh, the plan of taking these young men from their newly captured nations and nurturing them to Babylonia was a stroke of genius. For the captors, that is. What better way to break down the faith of a legacy of a conquered people than to show how easily their youth could be deprogrammed and brainwashed. Uh, oh, but uh, uh, I, 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 I didn't think how difficult that was for Daniel. They didn't know that Daniel was made of a strong moral fabric and that Daniel had come from all the way, that he knew what he was made of. He knew his friends were there, and they knew what they were made of. Are you praying with me, rising sun? Come on, yes. come on. Satan's intent was to use the Babylonians to, to further his war against the God the, chief, the children of Israel. Satan's tactics have changed. He's, he's cunning. We have to be more cunning. Yeah. We have only to look at what happened to the young, misguided, and vulnerable youth captured by the prison system, for example. Jesus. It doesn't take long before they become entrenched in, the, in that prison culture mm -hmm. and harden in their hearts towards any thought of God, any thought of moral values. Those who did not know God before their incarceration have a hard time, a difficult time, mm -hmm. sometimes a time that might escape them from finding God. Jesus. Uh, it's this current lifestyle for few fellow inmates. The first thing that Satan does to you is change your name. Mm. All right. The first thing he does is change your name. My God, my God. And that's because your name is a source of identification. Mm -hmm. yes. That's because your name is a source of identification. Yeah. Change a person's identification. He will soon desire to assimilate what you have identified him with. Rather than the influence of those around him with strong character that he had adopted, he chooses to become one of the boys so he can feel accepted. He chooses to take the low road. Names in themselves have no power. Their potency comes from relationship between the speaker and the listener. Mm. Who has your ear? Mm. Call a young man your dog. Mm -hmm. And he could become loyal to a fault with no mind of his own. Mm. Oh, yeah. Call a woman your 
and she could become most accommodating. Yeah. Call a young man a stud and he'll think that he's all of it. Yeah. That he's God's gracious gift to any young lady. Yeah. It all depends upon who's dishing out the flag. Yeah. Names can be tools and names can be bridges, but they can also be weapons. Too many young men and women yield to this kind of influence and are smitten with it, captivated by enchantment and fascinated by the comforts of their new position. That they become as pliable as wax in their conqueror's hands. But Daniel, whose name meant God is my judge, was no pushover. He was only 15 years old. He and his friends were made of that stiffer stuff. They had a protection as strong as bronze. And it was around them. And they had a fabric that was made of their faith. And that's what covered them. They had witnessed and come to know and believe in one and only true God. They resigned that they wouldn't break. They would rather bend to the ways of the world, but they would just keep it 100. Come on. In the same time, the same kind of courage our youth today needs. Because the youth is the face of the same dilemma. We are passing through what they are going to inherit. It's our obligation, it's our job to assist them in every way. God gave us stewardship. Yes. yes. Stewardship, not ownership. Yes. 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 Over that child. Yes. Right. To do the very best we can to, to instill in them the very fabrics of God's word. Yeah. Yes. That they'll learn to not conform the word to them, but them to God's word. That's right. That their example would be in a demonstration of how good our God is. Yes. yes. In the same kind of courage of our youth need today, because the youth is, the truth is, and the face of this dilemma is that just one molly. Is that that word? Am I getting it right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Tyra, you wouldn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> what one Molly at a party? What is it? What's a few snorts with your homies? What's one week of harmless or hazy? Mm. Oh. What is it? It's destruction. That's right. yes. It's destruction that leads to total destruction. Yes. One Molly can make you want another. Mm -hmm. yeah. One snort can make you leave your homies and go get your own. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Your hazing, your hazing can, can allow you to become criminally minded and want to become brutal and assaultive in mm -hmm. your nature with other folks. Come on, yes. Daniel motive was for refusing to participate in uh -huh. this new lifestyle. Uh -huh. Offered him a purely religious content. He was determined in his brave young heart not to embarrass his God or himself by accepting the food that was sacrificed to the idols of the Babylonians. All right. If he did, his new life would have come and become interwoven in the adulterous worship and every meal and in some sense of sacrifice to the gods of Babylon. Yeah. Sure, he could have indulged himself in the king's meat and defiled the laws of God, but Daniel chose to stand tall. Yeah. And be courageous. That's right. And keep it 100. Daniel's courage teaches us that our faith is meant to govern and to regulate our lifestyle mm -hmm. down to the smallest detail. There can be no compromise. God does not want your excuses, but He'll listen to your reason. Come on, yes. come on. Yes, come on. Yes. Sunday is a day of worship. Yes. Where you find a church. Your Bible is your sword. Come on now. Where you Bible. use it. Your heart is connected to God. Where you listen to it. Yeah. Your prayers are communication with God. Where you pray before your meals and kneel before your bedtime in your dorm room. You dare not allow yourself to get mixed up in even the smallest practical denial of God. Because according to Daniel, if you give it an inch, they'll take more, and you'll fail your test of faith. Yes, yes. Here's another hint that Daniel gives us. 
And if you're going to keep it 100, you've got to be cunning and crafty and clever like that. It takes a certain amount of cunningness to avoid the temptations of the worldly diets <clears throat> that the world has to offer. But Daniel was made of a different metal. Yes. Instead of eating the king's diet, he convinced the steward to, to prepare a vegetable diet for him and his friend. Yes. And while on a good nature steward did, he assisted the boys because God had touched his heart to assist the Hebrew boys and not his Babylonian king. When you're young, your parents know what's best for you. They know because they, above all others, have your best interest at heart. Yes. But the captive Daniel knew that at some point in his maturing faith, he had to recognize and acknowledge God's parental authority over his life. Yes. Yes. He had to learn to keep the faith yes. while everyone around him was losing theirs. Come on. Yes. Come on. Nobody said that a Christian is, is a winner. Nobody said it would be easy. Yeah, that's right. uh, it would certainly be far easier to go off to college and succumb to the, the ways of the lawless, careless lifestyles of the non-Christian peers. After all, who would fault you for wanting to have a little bit of fun? But I'm here to help somebody. <laughs> Get to the point yeah. where you take a minute and ask God, Say, Lord, will you go with me? And if you can't go, God, I can't go neither. Yes. I'm going to need your shelter to keep me from harm. I'm going to need you to navigate my steps. I'm going to need you, Lord, because I can't depend on nobody. I ain't got nobody. Lord Jesus, can you, not my friends, not my babe, not my dog, but nobody, God, but you. Yes. Lord, I need you. Yes. Many young dogs have dragged Jesus behind them yes. and not allowed them to leave him and through the hollow halls of the education as they pursue. Yes. Only to wake up one day and to find themselves totally separated from God. Mm -hmm. Daniel knew about that danger and he wasn't going to fall into that trap. He could just be as cunning and crafty as his enemy. Satan. He was determined to beat Satan and his captains at his own game. God gives you a spirit of victory. It's not relinquished. It fortifies itself. It replenishes itself. It renews itself. Yeah. And it rejuvenates you. You keep the word of God buried in your heart. Finally, if you're going to keep it 100, you got to be a champion like Daniel. Mm. Right. You got to right. be a champion like Daniel. Yes. Yes. The success of your faith <coughs> is an experiment that you can depend on. You have to try your faith like you never did before. You got to try your faith. Yes. Because yes. God continuously gives you examples. He continuously demonstrates. Something that you can believe in that you can't get from nobody else. When you wake up in that morning hour and you can open, eyes, open your eyes and you can recognize. You can recognize the room that you're in. The first thing you got was a mind of remembrance. Amen. And when you can put your foot off on the other floor and put one in front of another. Yeah. You didn't do it on your own. Hallelujah. God is the provider. Yes. God is the sustainer. Yeah. Yeah. Build your faith on that. Uh -huh. yes. Can't get it from nobody else. Yeah. Yes. We could suppose that a miracle took place in the lives of Daniel and his friends. Mm -hmm. yes. Because on a diet of vegetables, they grew stronger and their meat-eating counterparts fell down. Mm -hmm. One thing for sure, the steward in charge of these boys mm -hmm. learned a great lesson in diabetes. That a man's life consists of an abundance of things which he possesses. Nor does his body life consist in abundance of variety of the things he <coughs> It's not the things you eat. It's the things you believe in. Right. 
God will sustain you. He will keep you. Yes. The lesson was not that a vegetarian eats. Diet is superior. Or the total absence of meat is obligatory. After all, diet was only a smart of the Babylonians' idolatrous worship. They were more useful in the lessons of good health that is best kept with a careful spiritual diet. You cannot be a champion for the Lord if you partake in gluttony of the world. The fewer your wants, the easier it is to be a champion for Christ. The simpler your life, the greater your riches. The greater your separation from the world, the more time you will have for Christ. Yeah. Remember, in order to gain, we first have to lose. That's a lesson that a lot of people don't understand. But it's a simple lesson. I went in the store with $20. I bought some, came out with two. I was able to gain, but I also had to lose something. Yes, right. yes. It's a simple lesson. Yes. But believe this. Yeah. You don't lose time in God. When you invest time in God, yes. you're doing exactly what he chooses and desires you to do. Amen. He gives us 24 a day. That's right. And he don't ask for the 24. He don't even ask for the 23. Come on now. But he asked for something. Yes. Yes. Because it's everything. Yes. Everything that he yes. wakes you. Yes. And he sustains you. Yes. And he carries you. Yes. And he keeps you. Yes. Yes. Give him a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. That's all he asked for. God promises that no faithful man will ever become a loser. God will surely make up for all that you give up. Yeah. No one has ever left anything for Christ's sake. Has received less than a hundredfold for his faithfulness. God will fill you yes, he will. with what you become empty of. That's right. yes, yes. Can you keep it a hundred? Mm -hmm. Are you made of the same stuff that Daniel was made of? Mm -hmm. For the next four years, can you be courageous disciple from Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Can you use your faith as a crafty tool against the wiles of the devil? Yeah. Will you be a champion for Christ? King Nebuchadnezzar's three-year curriculum was considered to be all that was needed to turn four Jewish boys into Chaldean experts, fit to be traitors to their nation, fugitives from our God, tools of the time. But Daniel and his friends, would not defile their God. They refused. I pray you will not forgive your God either. I pray that you will not submit to Satan's four-year plan for you. I pray that you will stand before God all the time. Just keep it 100. If you keep it 100, God will bless you tenfold. Yes. Yes. Do you believe it? Yes. Can you keep it on? Amen. Can you keep it on? That's all he has. Yes. We can compare the Hebrew boys' experience yes. with seminarian students who are forced to study religion. Religions of the world, part of the graduation requirement. They may have to study Hindu, Buddhism, Zen, and all other religions of the world. But the knowledge they gain never overrides, overrides the faith in the one true and living God. Why? Because they kept it a hundred. Right. The question is, will you? Can you remain faithful to Christ when all around you, the rest are marching to the beat of another master? Can you walk amidst the foul tongue and not partake? Can you be among the heathens and not be consumed? Remember, he who does the will of God abides forever. Keep it 100. And I'm going to share something else with you. That it's kind to let you know that even way back then, Daniel, and you had more in common than you think in God. Mm -hmm. Daniel had more in common. And I believe today, and I'm going to get out your way. The 
question is, will you just remain faithful? Remember the things that mom taught you, the moral principles. Remember all the things that was instilled into you. Young people, take a stand against the pressures. Just take a stand. And there's one thing I believe that young folks say. Today, if they could talk to King Nebuchadnezzar, I believe they would say, Listen, King Nebuchadnezzar, and you will hear the bug I'm going to spill into your ear. <laughs> yeah, dude, you brought us to your hometown, but that doesn't mean we're going to bow down. And even though they changed our name, yeah. our testimony will remain the same. Yeah. And after telling you no, you offered us meat, but I guess you saw we still didn't eat. <laughs> you can do with us whatever you please. Yeah. We're still going to stand and not bow or bend our knees. Yeah. You can whip us, you can cast and rod, but you still won't, you still won't bow down to your idol God. So go ahead, almighty king, and stand your will, but our God will deliver us from out of your hands. Young people, take a stand against the pressures of conformity. Yeah. Take a stand against the status quo. Take a stand against yes. the sins that so yes. easily beset us. Yeah. Take a stand for God and he will stand for you. Yeah. And it's better to be with God in the dark yeah. than be in the world in an illusionary life. Yeah. May God bless you. May God keep you. Yes. Stand 100. Yeah.